All right, welcome back. So today what we're going to be taking a look at, as you probably can tell, is MacBook Pros. Yes, just as promised, we're going to do a little comparison. We're going to do some benchmarking and it's going to be good. Stay till the end. You'll get to see the comparison, all the specs. And while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe, follow us, like our videos, and hopefully we'll bring you lots of great content for a long time to come. So here we go. What we have here is this is, we just did an unboxing. It's a M2 MacBook Pro 14 M2. It's got 512 gig of hard drive space. It's got 16 gig of RAM and 14 inch retina display. This machine we have is a few years old. It's about a 2017, I believe, MacBook Pro. This is a Intel i7 processor. Again, 16 gig of RAM. I think it's got a 512 SSD as well. And uh, we're going to do a little comparison. I wish I had one of the M1 MacBook Pros like I showed you all before, but I don't have one at my, at my fingertips. So we're going to try to give you some specs to compare them. And we're also going to run benchmarks on these. And hopefully we'll be able to look up some benchmarks on the M1 and throw that in here, some screenshots or something, so you can kind of get the feel for what we're trying to do here. So software that we're going to use, it's called Geekbench. It's a free tool. There's a pro version you can pay for, which gives you more functionality. And on the last video, we just loaded this up. We haven't done a thing. I don't have Chrome. I don't have anything. I have literally the standard load that you would get this from Apple. So it's called Geekbench 6. As it comes up, Siri has so intelligently suggested for us, this is cross-platform, which is really cool because I support PCs, I support lots of Macs, and if I can have something that can work across and it's one tool, I am a fan. I would support them. I like them. If you want the pro version, go ahead and get it. I'm going to download this one. I'm going to download it for Mac OS. Allow compatible with Silicon or Intel processor. So these are both covered. I have a PC laptop covered. Um, so it's great. Here's a benchmark chart. So you can do, they've kind of done this for us already. We're going to give you the real life. We're going to show you how they compare. And we're going to show you the software as well. Let's go in here and get Geekbench installed. Here we go. So we're going to go ahead and say run CPU benchmark. I think this is going to take a few minutes. So what I'm going to do for a second here as this thing is going is I'm going to tell you just briefly how the different machines compare. This machine has got a 16-inch screen. You can see it's bigger. This is 14.2 when we did the M1s before, also 14.2. They're all retina displays. The newer ones have a liquid retina XDR display, and this is an original retina display, but still very good display. You can see it's very good, even comparing the two screens, this being bigger and this being newer. They both look excellent. These were eight core machines. This is a 12 core machine. M1 was a 10 core machine. GPU, these used like Radeon, AMD Radeon GPUs. This one I think is a 38 core. The M1 is a 32 core. So it's similar, but definitely an improvement. From this to this, it's a different, whole different platform. This was still AMD Intel machine. So that was a very popular and common combination in that era which was, you know, I say it like it was a long time ago, but it wasn't really that long ago. This machine can go up to uh, 96 gig of RAM. The M1 and the Intel machine, they maxed out at 64. These machines all have 16. So it's, you know, that's not exactly what we're talking about here. What else? Storage, they can all accommodate very large SSDs if they max out the same. Now, it's not exactly quite fair because this does have a larger display that's going to draw more power. So this machine's only rated to get about 11 hours on a full charge. The, this machine is 18 hours. The M2 and the M1 is slightly less. In all the tests that I've seen and all the articles I've read, it's about an hour difference if you're watching movies or you're surfing or whatever. It's about an hour difference between the M2 and the M1. And then this, again, is an older machine using a lot of different technologies with a bigger screen. 
They all have Touch ID, which if you don't know, it's a fingerprint reader. So you can log in and authenticate things just by pressing the fingerprint reader. This one has a slightly different looking fingerprint reader. And it also has the touch bar that lights up, which depending on what you're doing right now, I don't know if you can see. It's kind of cool. I think I'm going to even show you all in case you haven't really seen the touch bar and seen what it really does. You can see here that, see, it says escape and you have brightness and those things, but that wasn't there a minute ago. I can click here and, and get Siri and this touch bar will disappear. If I don't use it, I should have showed you before I pressed it, but this was just all blank. And this is all dynamic content, depending on what you're doing. So to me, I think that's awesome. I love it. I kind of miss it. I wish that they would have kept that because I personally think it was a cool feature. I didn't really have a machine that had one. This isn't my machine. It's my brother's machine. But I always thought this was a very cool idea to have the dynamic strip up there. All right. So my report came back over here. I'm going to go ahead and max that out um, over on this side. We, as I said, we already did it. So, you know, the four finger swipe, right? There it is. It's already there for you. So we can compare. Now, again, this is a 2017 machine, I believe. Look at the benchmark difference. Yeah, see, look, it says it right there. And I said it was a 16. It's reporting it to be a 15. So maybe I was wrong. I think it might be a 15 and something. So you see the M2 is at single core score at 2670 with Intel of 2017. Six years difference, people. So keep that in mind. Not totally a fair report. But as a matter of fact, I wonder if we can just pull up a benchmark chart of another machine so we can be a little bit more fair. MacBook Pro 14 M1. There it is, M1. Okay, so let's go back to this one. M2 2670 with a 12193 on multi-core. Here, you're only at 1249 with a 4044. So here, the M1, and if I go here, and we're at 2394. So that's pretty close. And here we got 10,540 compared to 12,193. So while it's close, it's a substantial difference because look, that's nearly a 20% improvement uh, in multi core, and it's about a good 10% improvement in the single core just from what this is reading now look at how much faster the newer machines this was the hot machine this was a flagship machine in its era and in six years i would guess that this probably was less expensive than this machine you know sans the difference in size of course but still i think that it's um it's amazing it's really amazing so this is four cores this is 10 cores what else can we compare to here Base frequency on just under three gigahertz. This is about three and a half gigahertz. This has two clusters, one with six and one with four. This is only a single cluster. It only has those four cores. So the secondary cluster on this machine has all the power that this machine has. So that's pretty substantially different. Cache, 128K, 64 on the data cache, and 4 on the L2. On this machine, you have 32K, quarter of it, right? You have 32K, half of this. You have 256K on the L2, and this has got 4 megs, so that's 8 times more. That's gigantic. So, um, yeah, this has L3 cache, 8 meg of L3 cache. So, be interesting. I'm not exactly sure how that, what that represents, but that's actually interesting. I might have to look into that more. What is that L3 cache really giving us? Here's single core performance. Here's all the breakdown of the different components that make up our overall score. And, you know, you might want to, for certain thing, multi-core or some, let's see, photo library, PDF rendering. You know, if you're someone who does that all the time, well, the M2 does it at 11351. A lot of, I mean, PDFs, sometimes you sit around waiting for a while. This, I don't even see that same test on this one. So that's a hard one to do. Photo library on this is at 4,000. This is on 1231. If I go to look at HDR, 14,000. This is 4,600. And the other one, 
is going to be, uh, let's see, HDR is 15,000. So that's some of the components, depending on exactly what you're trying to do, are definitely substantially faster on the M2 chip. So for some of the tasks that you might do, the M2 is substantially better than the M1 and a whole different realm from the numbers that we're getting from here, which represents why we get a 4,000 score. And on this one, we're into the 14,000 score. So, you know, but again, I can't stress enough. This machine is six years old. So it would be interesting maybe to see how these specs compare to some a cheaper machine that's more current that maybe, you know, to a PC or something. Maybe we'll have to run something like that. We do have on the Geekbench... We have the ability to run a uh, GPU. All right, so let's go back to the application. We're going to come over here. It looks like that CPU. This is a compute benchmark. Compute benchmark measures our GPU performance. Um, so let's go ahead and run this one. Here's our results. GPU score, OpenCL score. This machine here, if you look, it's at 43, almost 44,000. This is at 17,000. So that's major, right? That is a major speed. I didn't look up. I don't know that if we looked at this other one, does it really show us? I don't think we have the GPU for the M1 performance, but as you can see, way, way, way different than this machine. And from everything we've seen, you know, I think it's about probably a 10 to 30% increase on the M2 versus the M1. A lot of people notice the difference in the performance between the M1 and the M2. I don't know, maybe, like you said, certain tasks are definitely going to be faster on this, and you might overall notice that. So I'm anxious to see. I'm anxious to finish setting it up, try it out, and, you know, see how I feel. But I think still, great machine. I think it's totally worth the couple thousand dollars that they charge for it. I know it might sound like a lot, but it's a good machine. This machine will last you a long time. Look, this machine is six years old and it's still going strong. This machine will run Adobe Premiere, can do music. It can do a lot of things. So that shows you that when you're buying these machines, you're not buying a piece of junk. You're not going to get two, three years. The machine's going to continue to work and it's going to retain some value. Yeah, it's not going to be worth a couple thousand dollars. It's not going to be worth a thousand dollars for long, but you know what? It'll always be worth $500 for many years to come. This is a six-year-old machine. I'm sure easily could sell this machine for $500. No problem today. Try that with a PC. It's just not going to happen. And the winner is... I'm going to give Apple two thumbs up, one for each machine. I would say definitely not a bad choice to buy one of these machines. I'd say, sure, M2 is what's out there now. Um, you know, think good thought because you're getting a better machine with better performance. You're still paying about what you would have paid for the M1 when it was new. So it all works out and you're getting a great machine. So once again, subscribe to our channel, like it, follow us. We'll do more reviews. We'll try to uh, do things that are interesting, things that you want to see, things that are informative and fun. And uh, yeah, please tune in. So today that's it. See you next time. All right, folks, we appreciate you spending time with us in a world of wonders. It's a wonderful world. We'll see you next week.